This video includes a paid sponsorship from NordVPN, but I'll talk more about that later. Should you avoid buying a Tesla equipped with LFP batteries if you live in a cold northern climate? In this video, I'm going to reveal using real world examples just how the LFP batteries in Tesla's standard range vehicles perform in cold weather to answer this question. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. I'm a big fan of lithium iron phosphate batteries in electric vehicles, not only because these batteries are cheaper to produce, but they also last longer and are generally safer than their nickel based alternatives. However, lithium iron phosphate batteries can suffer from cold weather performance issues at lower temperatures. However, as I'm going to discuss using real world examples with basic planning, cold weather performance issues with a Tesla equipped with LFP batteries should be very minimal. So with that being said, I want to start out with the topic of cold weather range loss. Whether or not your electric vehicle is equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries or a nickel based battery, electric vehicles lose range in winter temperatures. And that's just a fact. For example, here's a chart that can be found at tessie.com forward slash stats, which shows the average efficiency of Tesla's lineup, the model S, X, three and Y at various temperatures. You can see that at lower temperatures and at higher temperatures, your efficiency goes down with an electric vehicle. Notice, for example, at around nine degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 12.8 degrees Celsius, the Model 3 will lose around 40% of its range. Or at around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero degrees Celsius, the Model 3 on average will lose around 27% of its range. Now do note that this average data does include all Model 3s, those equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries and those equipped with nickel based batteries, but nonetheless, it is a good baseline. But what about LFP equipped Model 3s specifically and cold weather range loss? Well, before I dive into that data, this portion of today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. You may not know it, but your online activity is constantly being tracked by many of the websites that you visit and your location is not private. However, when you connect to the internet through NordVPN, your location is masked and your data is encrypted so you can avoid being tracked whether you're at home or connected to a public Wi-Fi connection. All VPN services are not created equal and can slow down your connection speeds. However, NordVPN is nearly twice as fast as the next VPN provider, so you can safely browse without sacrificing speed. And since they have 5,900 plus servers in 60 countries, you can experience a fast VPN experience pretty much wherever you are in the world. And they allow you to connect up to six devices at one time. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going over to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. And also don't worry, it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, going back to the topic of cold weather range loss, specifically for LFP batteries, I pulled data from Bjorn Nieland on YouTube, and he does a lot of various range tests with electric vehicles. And he in the past has tested a Highland, a newly refreshed Highland long range model three. And also in the past, multiple times, he has tested a rear wheel drive model three with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And in this chart, you can see a combination here of how these two vehicles perform at two different speeds, 90 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour. And also note that these tests were performed in winter weather and you can see the temperature there. It wasn't extremely cold, but it was somewhat cold during these tests. But when you look at the cold range at around 56 miles per hour or around 90 kilometers per hour for the rear wheel drive LFP equipped model three, you can see as compared to its EPA range, it only lost around 7.4% of its range at that temperature driving 56 miles per hour. When you compare that to the Highland long range model three, that vehicle lost around 15.5% of its rated range. So there is a pretty big difference there. 
When it comes to driving at faster speeds, 120 kilometers per hour or approximately 75 miles per hour, you can see that the rear wheel drive LFP equipped Model 3 lost around 33% of its range as compared to around 40% of its range for the long range Highland version, once again, equipped with nickel based batteries. So when it comes to winter range loss as a percentage, yes, you begin with a little bit more range with the long range version of the Model 3. But when it comes to the percentage that you lose with these battery packs, from this data, it looks like the LFP Model 3 will actually give you more of your EPA rated range in the winter and you actually lose less range during the winter. So that's actually really interesting data. Now beyond that test, how does the LFP Model 3 do at even colder temperatures? Well, I came across this video published on the YouTube channel EV Motoring and the owner of a rear wheel drive LFP Model 3 did a range test. This range test was performed driving over 70 miles per hour on the highway. And also the temperature was quite cold. For most of the drive, the temperature was negative nine degrees Fahrenheit to negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So when driving in very cold weather at highway speeds, after using 97.9% of the battery's usable capacity, the vehicle was able to travel 156 miles. If the Model 3 had been driven all the way to a 0% state of charge till the vehicle stopped, I have no doubt that the vehicle would have gotten a little bit over 160 miles of range. So I'll just say 160 miles in this conditions is what you could expect running the car all the way to zero. And the car's screen said that this result was around 40% less efficient than the estimations for the vehicle. So around a 40% loss driving once again over 70 miles per hour on the highway in sub zero degree temperatures, negative nine to negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Going back to this Tessie chart, it looks like that result for the LFP Model 3 is actually better than the average for Model 3s at around that temperature range. Next, let's talk about cold weather charging speeds. Do Tesla's LFP equipped vehicles charge really slowly in the winter? Well, the first real world example that I want to discuss comes from the YouTube channel Twin Motors. And in this video, the cold weather charging speed of a Gigafactory Berlin long range Model Y was compared to a Gigafactory Shanghai built standard range rear wheel drive Model Y equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries. During this test, the outside temperature was around negative four degrees Celsius or around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, according to this video, neither of these vehicles had their batteries preconditioned and were only slightly warmed up by a short drive to the supercharger. At the supercharger, both vehicles arrived at approximately a 2% state of charge and they charged them all the way up to a 99% state of charge. The LFP equipped Model Y took around one hour and nine minutes to charge from 2% to 99%. And the long range all wheel drive version took around one hour and 12 minutes to do that same 2% to 99% state of charge. However, it is important to note that the LFP equipped Model Y does have a smaller battery pack than the long range all wheel drive Model Y equipped with nickel based batteries. So of course that has to be taken into account. And shortly I will talk about miles being added per minute of charging. But in this video, a chart was shared showing the charging curve comparison between these two vehicles. As you can see in this chart, once again with cold batteries, the LFP equipped Model Y was not able to receive very much charging power at the beginning as compared to the nickel based battery pack. However, by the time the LFP battery pack reached close to a 60% state of charge, you can see that it actually started surpassing the charging power of the nickel based pack. However, beyond the charging curve data, since we do have two different battery sizes, once again, we need to discuss how many miles are being added per minute of charging for a better comparison. As compared to the WLTP range estimates for these Model Y variants, using that data once again from Twin Motors on YouTube, when going from a 2% to 99% state of charge, the long range made in Berlin Model Y was able to add around 4.46 miles per minute of charging, whereas the LFP equipped Model Y added a little bit less than four miles per minute of charging. However, the charging power at a lower state of charge for a properly warmed up LFP battery pack would be much higher if you just do a little bit of planning and precondition the battery before charging. For example, while driving, if you navigate to a supercharger, the Tesla software will precondition and warm up the battery to maximize the charging speeds when you actually get to the supercharger. In addition to that, in cold weather especially, it's important that you keep your Tesla vehicle 
plugged in and you can actually go into the car software and use the scheduled departure feature and this will allow the vehicle to warm up the battery and cabin to prepare the vehicle for driving when you set that to happen. However, in addition to that, say for a less regular event, if you wanted to go ahead and precondition the battery manually, you can do that through the car software as well. You can use the mobile app, for example, and you can go to the climate section and you can warm up the cabin, which also helps warm up the battery and preconditions the battery as well. So with that being said, when it comes to the charging performance of a properly preconditioned warm LFP battery in the cold, I came across another YouTube video on the channel Drive Smarter and with a preconditioned battery in a 2021 LFP equipped Model 3 with an outside temperature of negative two degrees Celsius at around a 4% state of charge, the vehicle received up to 162 kilowatts. At a 35% state of charge, the car was still receiving around 100 kilowatts. And at a 65% state of charge, the car was still receiving around 81 kilowatts. All in all, in this video, the car was charged for around 20 minutes and the vehicle added 157 plus miles of range during that charge. So with a little bit of planning and preconditioning your battery with an LFP equipped Tesla, cold weather charging really shouldn't be much of a problem. When it comes to how the rear wheel drive Model 3 does in snow, based on my research, as long as you have the vehicle equipped with the proper winter snow tires, the rear wheel drive Model 3 does quite well in snowy weather. For example, I came across a video on the YouTube channel Rocky Mountain Tesla testing a rear wheel drive Model 3 driving in snowy conditions. And here's a portion of that video showing a rear wheel drive Model 3 driving up a snowy hill without slip start enabled first and then with slip start enabled. Everyone's asking if this car can handle winter. Mm -hmm. rear, rear wheel drive. drive, yeah. So let's do it. Let's... We're going up this massive hill right now. This is a crazy hill yeah. here in Calgary. So we're gonna see this is a pretty steep hill. So let's come to a stop on the hill. We're on the hill, stopped. Let's start moving forward. It's moving. Are you going forward or are you just like going oh, slow? Oh yeah, I'm like gunning it. Like... You're not gunning it. Oh yeah. <laughs> gunning it? Yeah, it is. Stuck. It might be stuck. <laughs> It's stuck right now? No, it's oh. not. It's moving. Okay. That's crazy. So are you this seriously? This would never happen in any, in like any internal combustion engine. That would not happen. So you were, were we stuck though? Like no, I don't know what's going on. it like was you, moving like so, but so slow. slow. But it's going, it's getting. It's, it's making it. <laughs> now we might not make it. Like we might. We're we so close. Not. We're so close to the crest. Oh, so close. Okay, we're going to switch into slip start. Okay. Driving. Use slip start. Here we go. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, that did take us out. <laughs> Wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> We're gonna drive around the corner here and just see what it's like. I took slip start off and... So if you're wondering how it handles corners and stuff like that, it's just fine. Yeah. That, that was like nothing. So rear wheel drive handled the corner ice and snow no problem like nothing like it was nothing it's it's crazy how amazing the handling is in this vehicle will an all-wheel drive tesla vehicle perform a little bit better in the snow of course but the rear wheel drive version does pretty well so really to wrap this up if you live in a northern climate and you're leaning towards an lfp equipped tesla vehicle i don't think that cold weather performance issues are going to be as big of a negative as it may seem like I say, as long as you're willing to do just a little bit of planning and make sure that you precondition your battery and just know some basic characteristics of the LFP battery, you won't really actually have a lot of problems in the winter. Yes, the all wheel drive powertrain will give you a little better traction in winter weather, but the rear wheel drive version is quite capable nonetheless.
I did want to say once again, thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer once again by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and also helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.